Hello, my friend, and welcome to Wisdom Trek. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our five-day-per-week Wisdom and Legacy podcast. This is day 393 of our trek, and today is Philosophy Friday. Every Friday, we will ponder some of the basic truths and mysteries of life and how they can impact us in creating our living legacy. Today, we are continuing on our trek covering the cycles and seasons of life. In particular, we are moving forward and focusing on the fall season of life. We are broadcasting from our studio at Home 2 in Charlotte, North Carolina. We drove back to Charlotte on Wednesday and will be here for a week before heading back to Marietta for a few days to six clients and for our granddaughter Aurora's fifth birthday celebration. We do travel a good bit, but with each season of life, our focus and priorities will change. We need to be flexible and willing to make those changes. Life rarely turns out how we expected and is based on the accumulation of all the decisions that we have made in our lives up until now. The key to living a rich and satisfying life is to make wise decisions and then choose to enjoy life even if it is different than what we expected. What you plant in the spring seasons of life and then nurture during the summer seasons of life is what you will harvest in the fall seasons of life. So plant and nurture wisely so your harvest will be fruitful and in abundance. Realize also that during your lifetime, there will be many different cycles of seasons. Just because a particular season did not turn out as you expected, don't let that control your entirety of your life. Each winter season gives us a time of reflection and planning, while each new spring season gives us an opportunity to start new again. This brings us to our trek for today as we consider moving from summer to fall within the cycles and seasons of life, and this section of our trek is titled, The Celebration of Fall. I would like to start off our trek today with a quote from Lin Yutang, who explained the seasons of life in this way. I like spring, but it's too young. I like summer, but it's too proud. So I like fall best of all, because its leaves are a little yellow, its tone mellower, its colors riches, and it is tinged a little with sorrow. Its golden riches speak not of the innocence of spring, nor the power of summer, but the mellowness and kingly wisdom of approaching age. It knows the limitations of life and is content. Now I have to admit that I am approaching the fall season of life, and I find that this quote is so true. As I mature, it is easier to see the riches of life, but also some of the limitations of life. With this knowledge, I can be content with how life is, not necessarily how I expected it to be. Fall is a time for celebration, as well as a time for searching of conscience. If you plan it abundantly in the spring, You fought against the insects, weeds, and the weather of the summer, fall can bring rewards, which will give you cause for rejoicing. On the other hand, if you watch both the arrival and the departure of spring, and you made little effort to take advantage of its almost momentary tenure, fall can be a time of turmoil, a time of anxiety, a time of great regret. It is in the fall that you discover how long or short the winter will be. The fall tells you if you have really done that which is required, or if you have fooled yourself through the temporary anesthetizing of conversation and pretense of telling yourself that you've worked enough when you really haven't. Although the following truths are difficult to accept at times, you must take the responsibility for your harvest during the fall. The soil and the arrival of fall together occupy the seat of judgment, which presents the final truth of your efforts. There can be no disputing its final verdict, for the evidence of your toil, care, and patience is indisputable. Either the crops are bountiful, or they are not. If not, you need to look no further than to the hands who were charged with the responsibility last spring. The excuse of poor soil, poor seed, or bad weather are better left unsaid. You as a sower selected the soil, selected the seed, and are held accountable for the harvest, not the circumstances that surrounded it. Nothing is more exciting than a bountiful harvest, and nothing more dreadful than the barren field in the fall. So it is as you are given the responsibility for planting the crops in your field, and so it is also when you are given your responsibility for your life and success in every area. An unproductive and meager results in the season reserved for harvesting makes confession of your own past failures both difficult and necessary. An empty bank account is a sign of past ineffective effort. It is a sign of missed opportunities. It is a sign of too much procrastination or laziness or spending on non-essential luxuries. The principles and laws that are found in God's word are faultless. This applies equally to the farmer, to the business person, and to your personal life. Just as the law of gravity is a universal law, there is a law of God that is equally applied to all things and all people, regardless of personal belief. This law has endured since the creation of the world, and for as long the humans have sought to circumvent it, or argue with it, or even ignore it. 
In the end, your results will demonstrate if you have obeyed its orders or disobeyed. The law is simple and known to all. The law is found in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. This law is universal both in the spiritual and natural worlds. In all areas of human existence, be aware of what you put into this world is what you will get back from it. It is God's principle and a way of leveling the field. Your thoughts and actions determine your results, your lifestyles, and your attitudes. Lies, sooner or later, attract lies in return. Finding an easier way to do something at the expense of quality will take its inevitable toll and decrease results whether that be in profits or in sleepless nights or both. All effort, whether it is how you treat others personally or in the business world, be it service, marketing, recruiting, or the manufacturing of products, must bring good to all those that are involved or the effort will not withstand the final test of time. Corn planted in the spring will produce corn in the fall, as will wheat, barley, or melons produce after their own kind. You cannot plant one crop and expect to harvest another just because you change your mind during midsummer. While there may be temporary exceptions to this, it is the tendency of humans to look after those who enjoy success as having been, at some time earlier, either lucky or dishonest. Surely the man driving a luxury car toward an expensive home on the hill could not deserve it through his hard work and sacrifice. Such is the language of the poor. For the fortunate man with the car and the house on the hill, these are crops given to him in the fall of his business season, as just rewards for the efforts expended during the earlier springtime of his life. This may be the same springtime during which those who now condemn this man possibly sat back and laughed, or fished, or told stories. This is the folly of humans. Those who do not possess will always scorn the possessor. Those who condemn a successful man or woman for their apparent good fortune or dishonesty are unaware of the price often paid for success. They cannot see the massive disappointments, the shattered hopes, or the broken dreams. They do not understand the risk incurred by both raising and investing capital for an idea yet unproven. They do not see the legal involvements, the tax burdens, the challenges of labor, the restraining government regulations nor do they appreciate the family descent that seems to automatically accompany the pursuit of success. Those who condemn see and scorn the results, being unaware of the cost, as well as the cause that that produced the success. For so long as the selfish of the world scorn the successful, that long will they continue to live as they now live. In the fall, we either enjoy or we excuse. For those who fail to take full advantage of the spring, who fail to guard the crops carefully throughout the heat of the summer, There can be no legitimate reason, only excuses, and excuses are merely apologetic attempts to place blame on circumstances rather than on ourselves. The difference between an inadequate apartment and a mansion on the hill is the same difference between an average effort in the spring and a massive effort in the spring. Nature always promises a cup produces a bushel, that we will receive more than we plant. Knowing this, as all of us do, we forget that to reap many bushels, which is the measure of success, we still must plant many cups. Massive action in the spring of life is still a requirement for massive success in the fall. Forty hours a week invested in a field of opportunity may not be enough, especially if it's invested in the wrong field. Sometimes to improve your results, you must make the painful admission that your present fields are too rocky or thorny or the fertile soil is just too shallow. And while there is great difficulty involved in changing one field for another more fertile field, that difficulty is insignificant compared to the ultimate difficulty that comes from not changing. The truths of the fall seasons are difficult for us to success, and I also struggle with these concepts, even though they are universally true. I realize that there may be overriding exceptions, but we cannot allow this to be an excuse for our meager harvest. We all know of those who have overcome massive mountains of opposition to produce a bountiful harvest in their lives. It is my prayer that all of us, including myself, will take to heart, consider, and understand these truths. The immutable laws of planting and harvest are set by God and cannot be changed or violated any more than we can override the law of gravity. When you grasp this concept, then you can direct and achieve the rich and satisfying life that Jesus offers in John 10 verse 10. Next Friday, we will change our season to the winter season of life, the length of which will be dependent on our results during the fall. Our next check will be Motivation Monday, where we will explore more trails on how to get and stay motivated in order to bring value into your world. So encourage your family and friends to join us, and then come along with us on Monday for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. 
Now we'll finish our trek for today. Just as you enjoy these daily doses of wisdom, we ask you to help us to grow Wisdom Trek by sharing it with your family and friends through email, Facebook, Twitter, or in person when you meet with them and invite them to come along with us each day. If you'd like to listen to any of the past daily treks, they are available at wisdom-trek.com. And don't forget to subscribe to Wisdom Trek so that each day's trek will be downloaded to you automatically. I would also appreciate it if you'd rate and review us on iTunes and Google Play so that others will find out about Wisdom Trek and join us. The journal for today's trek is available at wisdom-trek.com. Thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal each day. And as we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, Listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. This is Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you on Monday.